Hi, my name is Zach Anderson. I am the Inside Technical Sales Rep at Neutronics. I'm sitting here with Peter Call, the VP of Neutronics, and also sits on the SAE uh, Committee for Air Conditioning. Hi, Zach. Hi, Pete. How are you? Good. 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 So can you just go into more detail on what you do with SAE, what your relationship is? Well, SAE, Interior Climate Control Committee, has a, a number of subcommittees, uh, fluid, steering, etc. And I'm chairman of the service committee, so technically the Interior Climate Control Service Committee. We're responsible for uh, creating and monitoring the standards for all of the AC service equipment and training that's required to do good air conditioning service in compliance with the EPA law. Okay. All right, and the purpose of this conversation is to A, clear up some of the regulations that are out there because we see regulations as just, a lot of times it's just SAE and then a letter and three numbers. Right. It doesn't really mean much. Um, so we're here to kind of clarify that. We're, probably, we're going to talk a little bit into YF, the one the one two three four YF, the okay. protection that's replacing 134A. Um, and actually that's where we're going to start. Um, so I guess the question everyone wants to know is, why? Where did where did this all start? What was all the, come from? What was the catalyst for this change? Well, some people think, and, and incorrectly, some people think that um, one of the refrigerant manufacturers had their patent expire, mm -hmm. so we had to change refrigerants. That's absolutely false. There were no patents involved here right. in, in the case of changing refrigerants. Where it really comes from is um, Montreal Protocol, Kyoto Protocol. Uh, You've heard more about Paris Accord, all these environmental uh, agreements that we have globally, but they led to a rule, an F gas rule in Europe okay. that was uh, put forth in 2006. And essentially, the F gas rule in Europe said effective starting in 2011, but really effective January 1st of 2017. I can't use a refrigerant in a mobile air conditioning system or a car that has a global warming potential of greater than 150. Okay. So starting in Europe, then that transitioned over to the U.S., not by law, but really because it's a, a global marketplace. Right. So somebody like a Ford or a GM said, well, we're having to do this for Europe can we do it for the U.S.? Would it be easier for us? And EPA came in and they said, well, if you want to do that, that would be great. We'll give you some carbon credits, okay. some credits towards your tailpipe emissions if you switch to a low global warming refrigerant. Okay. So that's kind of how we get to having 1234YF here domestically. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's the only thing that you can buy a car with in Europe. Right. Okay. So just, you know, you said the 150... GWP is the limit, right? What just for reference is 134A for GWP? Uh, it depends on how they count their beans, but GWP is anywhere from 1300 to 1430. Mm -hmm. Depends on which calculation they use. Okay. So it's uh, roughly 10 times more global warming potential. Okay, and YF is YF again similar thing. Depends on how you count your beans, either less than one. And up to four, okay. uh, depending on which formula they use, but it's generally referred to as less than one. Okay. All right. That's fair. Um, what, why, why YF, why not? I mean, you hear about CO2 or I guess, or natural refrigerants such as propane, which makes me nervous as it is, but oh, let's just, I mean, <laughs> I lit my grill for propane this morning, so it's one of those things where I'm not wanting to, you know, put down my car, but, um, okay. Why? So why YF? Okay, so why YF? Um, that's a really, really good question. When the European folks came up with the F-gas rule, we had to go find a new refrigerant. Mm -hmm. And they essentially gave us five years to do that. Okay. And so a lot of things were kicked around, and we looked at some other formulas that we had. R152A is a very common refrigerant that we've known about. We actually knew about 1234YF for quite a while also. That was not a new invention. It was around. It was just never commercialized. Okay. Um, and CO2 and, and R600, propane, butane, isobutane. So we looked at a whole group of things. And one of the things that the car makers really wanted to do was they wanted to find something where they didn't have to make a lot of changes to the system. Okay. They wanted to be able to take essentially the same system or same type of system right. 
uh, that we have, a direct expansion system instead of a secondary loop that might be required for a flammable refrigerant mm -hmm. or a uh, CO2 system. Mm -hmm. and, and the goal was, let's try not to have to change the car. Right. And one thing led to another, and, and looks like 1234YF kind of came out as, as the choice. Mm -hmm. Then a lot more testing was done, and they applied it to the system, and they found out, wow, it works really well in these systems, and if we make just a little tweak to the system, we can make it even better. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only drawback is the cost. It's right. expensive refrigerant. Okay. And now we, uh, it's well publicized. YF is slightly flammable. Now, when we say slightly flammable, I guess, is there a, a classification out that's not uh, A2L, or I believe it is, through ASHRAE? Um, if you were to light what would you compare it to in flammability? If I took your YF and lit it, what else comparable, or is there anything? Well, I, 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 I guess I wouldn't compare it to anything... Um, you know, like a propane or something, I'm right. commonly thinking of lighting. But but a good way to think about it is, underneath the hood of the car, there's a whole bunch of flammable stuff. Right. And, and we won't go through all of them, but we're talking about gasoline, mm -hmm. we're talking about diesel fuel, we're talking about transmission fluid, power steering fluid, mm -hmm. uh, motor oil, okay. you know, right. antifreeze, etc. And in that scale, 1234YF is the lowest flammability of all the things I mentioned. Right. Frankly, it's only thing that's less flammable that's a fluid under the hood is the windshield washer fluid. Okay. So, if you're comfortable working with motor oil, mm -hmm. you should be comfortable working with 1234YF. And, and some people will say, yeah, but the motor oil is not under the pressure that YF is. That's true. But the gasoline, especially in more modern engines, you know, that have uh, um, high pressure fuel pumps could be at a couple thousand PSI in the fuel rail okay. there. And that's gasoline. Right. And we're talking about a pressure for 1234YF that's almost identical to 134A, mm -hmm. you know, that 100 to 300 PSI range okay. there. So okay. from a flammability standpoint, uh, really not a concern. Obviously mm -hmm. handle with care, just right. like everything else. But if you're comfortable doing uh, oil changes and transmission fluid and so mm -hmm. forth, then flammability shouldn't concern you here. Right. Okay.